This is a picture of the Ameritron 572 amplifier. Two of the tubes have the plate blocking capacitors in this picture almost touching the tube. There should only be one capacitor in this application, not two. They cheaped and lazied out on this construction. The purpose of that capacitor is to isolate the Pi network and antenna jack and the antenna from the potentially deadly high voltage on those plates. It is an unforgivably ignorant novice level mistake for Ameritron or whoever made this thing to put those two capacitors right there between those plates. In an amplifier owned by a ham near me those capacitors have been overheated because not only are they exposed to heat from the from the envelopes but infrared from the plates. See vacuum tubes plates don't, don't have any path to lose thermal heat through. They give off infrared emission. And where Ameritron put these capacitors is right in the shine off those plates. And these capacitors are darker orange. <coughs> That's a no-no. They should be a lighter color. Drake made the same mistake in the TR4. In fact, this TR4 and the plate blocking capacitor in that case was also cracked open. The cracks occur, they tend to occur right here along where the uh, corner is. On the, or the, not the corner, but the, uh, the outer shoulder of this circle of the capacitor. And in this amplifier, those were cracked. The way we found this is that <coughs> I was sitting talking to the owner of the amplifier. The amplifier was just sitting on idle, not doing anything. We were listening to the receiver. And I turned the plate control down past zero, and we heard arcing in the receiver. Now, the amplifier is not making RF at that point, so it proves that there's DC on the output tank. <coughs> there's an RF choke, usually, on the antenna side that's intended to keep that antenna side of the capacitor at DC ground. If these capacitors break down enough <coughs> and conduct enough current to open that RF choke, then all these components in the Pi network, the switching, and the antenna can become exposed to plate voltage, and that can kill a person. So what I did was bought some larger disc ceramics. I bought some 2200 puffs at 10 kV which had longer thicker leads and I moved the capacitor body over here towards this board and used it, took advantage of the long leads to reach back up here. There, there's no excuse for these capacitors not being put on this board and this strap maybe continued down over to the board to get these away from the heat. Any competent engineer any good ham would never make that mistake. All components have temperature ratings just like they have voltage and current ratings. And they can't be exceeded. And this is an especial problem in tube equipment where the temperature inside the enclosure is raised. But we've, we've kind of forgotten about this in the solid state era. But in power supplies and tube equipment, it still applies because we can't cheat Mother Nature. I did a service ticket with, I think it was MFJ. The response I got was unforgivable. Lie, deny, and cover up. There's nothing wrong with their amplifier. It must be my problem. So I contacted our f supposed friends at CQ Magazine, and they just basically brushed it off. They, they made a, a, a superficial contact, and they denied it to CQ Magazine. CQ threw their hands up and walked away. No excuse for it from either party. This, this kind of ignorant mistake proves that there's no one involved in designing and laying this thing out that has engineering knowledge. Because again, this is a potentially deadly mistake. If you have one of these, take those capacitors out and spend 20 bucks on a good high voltage feed-through capacitor and stick it on that board and wire it up. Your, your life is certainly worth more than $20. KBYP out.